Okay, welcome to day three of three on our unit of wind and atmosphere. Our topic today is wind systems. Today we're going to know the difference between sea and land breezes. You will understand the Coriolis effect. And you will know the difference between global wind patterns. And we will quickly learn about <clears throat> the jet stream. Okay, so for your quick write, why do you think the water spins clockwise as it goes down your drain? Does hot air rise or sink? Okay, is it light, low density, or heavy, high density? As the sun comes out during the day, what do you think heats up faster, land or the ocean? If the land is hot, how do you think this affects the air above it? And if you were to let a helium balloon float up in the air, which way do you think the wind would take it? Okay, good questions for your quick write, so make sure you do it for five easy points. Pause it if you need more time. I'm going to move on. <clears throat> All right, daily winds. Land and water absorb heat differently, okay? This uneven heating, okay, between land and water creates wind. So whenever air rises, we get low pressures. When air, air sinks, we get high pressure. So these daily wind patterns we call sea and land breezes that exist, okay, between the water and the continents, okay? So notice something. We get these land breezes during the day where wind is going from land to ocean, okay? Air rises, low pressure. And then during the day, as the sun comes out, okay, <clears throat> we get the difference. What air goes from ocean to land here, where it gets warmed and it rises. So let's investigate this a little more, okay? So in the morning, the sun comes out and heats both the land and water, okay? The land heats up faster than the water. It gets hotter, okay, as a result, hot air above the land rises, okay, this is low pressure, whenever air rises, we get low pressure, okay, cooler air over the ocean moves inland, creating a sea breeze, okay, so you feel wind right here, right, a sea breeze, Notice the temperatures at noon between land and water. Temperature of the water is about 65 degrees Fahrenheit, and the temperature of the land is about 85. So the land is much hotter. <clears throat> this uneven heating, okay, creates a sea breeze. So during a sea breeze, air or wind moves from water over to land, okay? <clears throat> at night, though, the exact opposite happens. The sun goes down and the land cools down quicker than the water now. So the land quickly loses its heat. The land cools and the water is now warmer than the land. So the exact opposite happens. The water is now warmer than the land. And as a result, hot air over the water rises. Okay. And then... Okay, which you have low pressure here, all right, air rising, okay, and cooler air over the land moves out towards the sea. <clears throat> Notice the temperature difference at 12 midnight between the land and water. Temperature of the land is cold, 53 degrees, and the water is now warmer, 65 degrees. Well, during a land breeze, air or wind moves from land to water by convection. This is a convection current. It's the flow of a heated material, okay? Low pressure as air rises, high pressure as air sinks, okay? So, for your notes, what is the difference between a land and sea breeze, okay? Write the question on the left-hand side, answer on the right-hand side, use the answer bank to determine which words best complete the sentence. Here we go. All right, the Coriolis effect. What the heck is that? Sounds kind of like a weird thing, huh? So, have you ever wondered why water spins as it goes down your drain? Well, the Coriolis effect deflects all free-moving objects, such as air and water, to the right, north of the equator, in the northern hemisphere, and to the left, in the south of the equator, in the southern hemisphere. So, notice this diagram here. Whoops, let's go back. Okay, in the northern hemisphere, objects go, if they, if the earth wasn't spinning, objects would go straight. 
but they're because the earth is spinning okay objects are curved to the right so the black arrow shows the actual path of an object like wind or an ocean current but the red would show if the the path of wind or water if there the earth wasn't spinning okay notice to the right the black arrows curved to the right in the northern hemisphere and to the left in the southern hemisphere okay all right let's investigate this a little bit further here we have a non-rotating earth free move, moving objects move in a straight line if the earth wasn't spinning right that'd be easy okay but we know that the earth spins i think most of us do okay <laughs> and free moving objects actually move to the right in the northern hemisphere they are curved to the right here they're curved to the right down here their southern hemisphere they're curved to the left they're curved to the left okay so that's the path of wind okay in the northern hemisphere objects are deflected or curved to the right and in the southern hemisphere objects are deflected or curved to the left this is also what creates hurricanes to take on this spiraling shape the same with okay tornadoes these objects all have their characteristic funnel shaped because of the Coriolis effect okay so for your notes what is the Coriolis effect question on the left hand side answer on the right hand side okay use the answer bank to determine which words best complete the sentence I'm gonna move on go ahead and pause this while you write now okay <clears throat> Okay, the global wind patterns. For centuries, we have sailed and navigated our planet, okay, and just made discoveries, discovering like the like um, the Americas, like Columbus. Okay, we've traded with other countries in the early 16 and 1700s with what are called the global wind patterns. So we just learned that the Earth transfers heat from the equator to the poles by convection in our last day of notes. Well, that was a simplified model. As it turns out, our Earth has predictable wind patterns that form convection cells, moving heat from the equator all the way to the poles. These are the prevailing wind patterns. Remember, wind is mostly convection, <clears throat> the transfer of heat by the flow of a heated material. Well, this is a more realistic diagram of how our Earth moves heat. Notice they're curved because of the Coriolis effect here. But let's investigate this a little further here. Okay, so let's throw some latitude lines on there. All right. At the doldrums, hot air rises at the equator because, remember, areas near the equator are heated the most. And that hot air quickly rises. And you get a region of, okay, stormy weather right around the equator. We'll talk about this more when we study weather and climate. Okay. So, <clears throat> between 0 and 30 degrees latitude are the trade winds. Notice they are deflected to the right in the northern hemisphere and deflected to the left in the southern hemisphere. So their path is this direction, mostly, roughly, okay, east to west. So they kind of do this circulating pattern as they go across the planet here. Next we have the westerlies. Well, we live in the westerlies between 30 and 60 degrees latitude and these, these winds blow roughly west to east. Notice once again they're curved to the right as a result of the Coriolis effect in the northern hemisphere they curve to the left in the southern hemisphere okay and then we have the easterlies okay between 60 and 90 degrees to the north pole and south pole okay up here the easterlies okay once again they curve to the right in the northern hemisphere and curve to the left in the southern hemisphere and they roughly blow from east to west okay so for your notes what are the global wind patterns Okay, question on the left-hand side, answer on the right-hand side. Use the answer bank to determine which word best completes the sentence here. Okay, go ahead and pause this while you write. Okay, I'm going to move on here to the jet stream. Our last day of the thing of notes is coming up. Okay, so <clears throat> the jet stream. All right, at the top of the troposphere are fast high-altitude winds known as the jet stream. And these winds basically meander or curve in between our wind systems here, our, our wind patterns, our global wind patterns. So they're high up in the air and they go in between the trade winds and the westerlies and the easterlies here. Okay, and these are very, very fast winds. Like I said, these winds flow between the trade winds, westerlies, and polar easterlies. 
Jet stream winds often curve and bend as they circle the globe. The curve and bending is once again the result of the Coriolis effect. Think of these winds like a river of air that can travel between 100 and 300 miles per hour high up in our atmosphere. Very fast high altitude winds. The jet stream. If you ever watch the news, you've probably seen the jet stream because the newscast person always talks about it. So the last one today is, what is the jet stream? Okay. Question on the left-hand side. Answer on the right-hand side. Go ahead and use the answer bank to determine which words best complete the sentence. Okay. Go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. Okay, you can always do your own summaries. In fact, I encourage you to do your own summaries, okay? But what I would like you to do is to draw and label the diagrams and write these two bullets here, okay? Draw and label them, okay? Showing the wind patterns and everything, okay? So go ahead and pause this while you write your, complete your summaries, okay? That concludes our unit on wind and atmosphere. Congratulations, you've done a great job if, you've, if you're listening and you made it this far. All right, we'll see you next time. Go ahead and pause this, please.